What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we are doing a video about Scan My Tesla. Uh, I know I've kind of talked about Scan My Tesla and shown little bits and pieces of it in previous videos, but I've never really gone over it and it's been commonly requested in the comments. So today we're making a video about it. Uh, we're gonna head up into my studio space, but first let me show you how I have it set up in my car. Alright, so I've got the Android tablet here, which is a Google Nexus 7 old tablet. It doesn't need to be much to run this app. Um, that is connected via Bluetooth to an adapter here. So it does use a fairly standard uh, OBD adapter. So that's OBD2 to Bluetooth. That's going into this harness here that plugs into the Tesla CAN bus port. So just like this. And then once you put that back up there, it's like nothing ever happened. You just have to kind of find a home for it. And then that goes like that. Uh, you can pull it down like that. Take that little connector. You plug it in. A little difficult to do one-handed. Just like that. And then that's how we get to OBD which is how you connect to the Android tablet here. Obviously it disconnected since I disconnected the adapter. Uh, the harness that I bought is compatible with both the newer Model S and X, as well as the older Model S. Um, I don't believe they sell this harness anymore, but I bought it for better resale if I ever choose to sell this harness uh, to someone else when I eventually get a Model 3 or Model Y. But now that I've kind of shown you how I have this set up, um, you could remove this bin if you wanted to, but it doesn't really bother me. So I just have it tucked up in here. And then that way it's out of the way. It doesn't rattle or anything. And then this bin just sits down a little bit. Not the prettiest, but I don't really care. Uh, but yeah, here's the app. Uh, usually when you disconnect it, you have to kill the app and then reopen it. And then it'll reconnect. All right, we made it inside. I've got my desk set up here. Um, I'm just gonna kind of walk through all the different tabs and things that you can do on the Scan My Tesla app. Um, so while we are outside of the car, my car is in the garage and I did leave it on. Um, so to do that and leave the driver rail on, you actually just put it in neutral, uh, manually set the parking brake in the settings, uh, and then put on the hazards. So that way the driver rail stays on and I can still connect to everything. Um, and my car is just downstairs in the garage and I'm inside at my desk, uh, where we can do a little bit better audio and everything. So here we have the performance tab. This is just the default tab that you'll see when you open the app. Um, some of these are default tabs, some of these are tabs that I've set up. Um, so it's just showing the validity of the information, the state of charge, cell temp average, uh, as well as the speed. Obviously we're not moving right now. Uh, so speed, this will actually show you your 0 to 30, 0 to 40, 0 to 50, 0 to 60 miles per hour, um, or in kilometers if you have it set to metric units. Um, it does record the state of charge as well as um, the cell temp average so that way if you do a screenshot or something of this you kind of have a better sense of what's going on with the car for those times next we'll go into temps here this is usually the screen that i'm on while i'm driving or when you guys see it in the car uh, so here we can see the amount of power that the thermal controller is using so that's for climate control as well as battery temperature control now uh, we have the battery inlet temperature so this is from the cooling system the coolant temperature as it's going into the battery uh, here we have the powertrain inlet, so that's for the inverter, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, it's when it's entering some element of the powertrain. Here we have the minimum, average, and maximum cell temperatures of the battery pack, so that's reported by the battery management system. Um, we're seeing the cooling system state, whether it's running in series or parallel. Uh, we can see the battery pump status, so those are the coolant pumps, powertrain pump, there's two of those, so you can see the duty cycle that they're running at. Um, radiator bypass, so that's whether it's bypassing the radiator. So right now it is flowing through the radiator for cooling, but it is bypassing the chiller system, which is using the air conditioning refrigerant to cool the uh, coolant in the battery pack. Coolant heater, obviously we're in Arizona, it's about 100 degrees outside. We are not using the coolant heater, but if we were in Minnesota and it was very cold out, we would see the duty cycle of the coolant heater. Here we have the PTC air heater. So that's the cabin heater. Um, so that can run at various different duty cycles. 
We can see the refrigerant temperature. The climate control is on in the car right now. Um, it's pretty normal for that to fluctuate kind of all over the place depending on what it's doing. And then we have the rear stator temperature, so that's inside the motor. Next, we'll go on to HVAC. Um, so as you tap on the different tabs, it does load different information. So here's some of the same information. So we've got the thermal controller, uh, cooling heater, PTC heater. We've got the outside temp, uh, 105, inside temp, 91. Oh, I guess I did turn off the... Hmm. thought I left the climate on, but I guess I turned it off. Um, AC air temp, so that's from the uh, vents inside the car. Uh, refrigerant temp again. Here we can see the different vents and their temperatures. The louver status, so that's for inside the climate control box. Um, whether the AC is on or off, fan speed, uh, HVAC temp left and right. Um, so that way you can see if it's in sync or split. And then yeah, it's basically just a bunch of different statuses of different elements of the HVAC system. Here we go into the efficiency tab. So we can see the efficiency of the DC to DC converter. So that's what powers the 12 volt system in the car. So being that it's an electric car, it doesn't have a normal alternator like a gas car would to power that 12 volt system. So you can see the conversion efficiency from the high voltage, 350 or 400 volts, all the way down to that 12 volt. Uh, so this is front and rear motor efficiency. Obviously we're not moving, so it's 100% or 0% efficient. We're not moving, so no speed. You can see the battery heater temp. So that's the temperature at the battery heater, not necessarily that the battery heater is running. This is the amount of power coming out of the battery. So about 0 0.4, 0 0.5 kilowatts as the car is just sitting. Uh, you can see how much power is being used by the thermal controller uh, on the high voltage side, which is zero right now, but you can see a little bit is being used on the 12 volt side. Um, so most likely just some, um, the coolant pumps. Uh, 400 volt system, how much is being used. Don't know why it's saying the propulsion system is pulling 62.8, but sometimes it'll do weird things when the car is just sitting because it doesn't know what to do with the data. Here we go into battery. So we can see the actual high voltage battery uh, voltage. So 342 volts, and it's currently pulling about 1.2 to 1.3 amps. And then power, so that's in kilowatts of so volts times amps, that's kilowatts. DC to DC current, so it's pulling 31 amps on the DC to DC system at 13.1 volts, so totally normal there. You can see the coolant temp at the DC to DC, so that's uh, either in the front wheel well or under the back seat, I can't recall. But 95 degrees, nothing to be alarmed by. You can see the input power, so 400 watts, and then how much is being put out. So that's the efficiency that we saw on the previous efficiency screen. So you can see the max power that the front drive unit and the rear drive unit will pull, as well as their max regen. Here we can see the nominal full pack capacity, 62.4 kilowatt hour, and then uh, nominal remaining, so 56 kilowatt hour. Obviously my pack isn't fully charged right now. We have the four kilowatt energy buffer, 89% state of charge. Uh, then we have the usable 58.4 and the usable remaining is 52. So 56 minus the four is 52 and 62.4 minus the four is the 58.4. Uh, here we can see the actual versus um, user interface state of charge, DC and AC charge totals. So my car has been supercharged or DC fast charged almost 16,000 kilowatt hour or about 16 megawatt hour and AC charged almost 30 megawatt hour or 30,000 kilowatt hours. Um, there's the total charge, total discharge, as well as regen. So that's a kind of a cool stat. You can see that it's regenerated almost 21 megawatt hour, 1,000 discharge cycles, but 1,063 charge cycles. Odometer, 151. You can see the max discharge, max charge, rated range, as well as the typical range. So I believe that's going based on the ideal range on the display for a Model S. Here we have if it was full, so 218 or full typical, which is ideal. Um, again, that same battery information that we saw on the previous screen, but down here we have the voltages as well. So we have the minimum voltage of the cell, which is 4.070, max 4.074, and then the average, which is 4.072. 
And then here you can see the difference in cell voltage as well as the imbalance of 4.27 millivolts. I wouldn't be too alarmed by that. This is a lot of the same information as on that previous battery screen, but displayed in a more graphic user interface. So here we can see all the different BMS voltages. Um, and as they fluctuate, they do change color slightly. We can see the different temperatures, the cell difference in voltage, min, max, average. But this is for each individual module as well as brick inside those modules. Uh, here's again some of that uh, BMS info that was on that previous screen as well. This is if you set a trip, you can reset this independently from the master, so that's kind of cool. And then here we have every single stat that's not necessarily in all those tabs, but a lot of these are in those tabs. Uh, here we have the watt pedal, so that's like the gas pedal, that's what they call it on here. Um, we've got mechanical power, we've got efficiency. Let's leave that there for a second. We've got various other temperatures that aren't displayed elsewhere. Uh, you can see the motor RPM for both the front and the rear, which is cool. Uh, you can see the steering angle. So right now my steering wheel is not straight in the garage. And then down here we have all those cell voltages as well. So same on that BMS screen as well as the temperatures. You can have another trip set. And then this is what a lot of people like to run to on for driving. It'll show you the front rear torque bias, um, output power, cell temp, all that fun stuff, voltage. You can set it up with different views as well. So not anything too crazy here, just a different way of showing it. And yeah, so that's Scan My Tesla. Um, it's about a $10 app, I believe is what it was when I bought it. It should be about the same. And that adapter that I bought, I'll link down below in the description. I bought it from the German company, um, but there's a couple other spots you can get it as well. And yeah, it took a while to, to ship for mine. Um, I believe it was about four weeks, but I think they had to make them at that time. They were out. And the one that I have, they no longer make, which is that dual plug adapter. But I think a lot of people watching this probably have a Model 3 and those you can get elsewhere. So I'll link to the page from Scan My Tesla that lists a couple different spots you can buy these adapters. And feel free to put any comments down below. I'm happy to help out. But uh, keep in mind this information, if you don't know what you're looking at, I wouldn't necessarily think that anything's wrong with your car unless you really have reason to believe so. But sometimes information overload can, believe, can lead to thinking that there's something wrong when there really isn't. So just keep that in mind. If your car is driving fine, don't worry about it. And as always, drive more, worry less. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please hit that like button down below. Um, if you wanna see some of my future content, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. And I hope to see you guys around. Thank you for watching.